Matthew, and uh, I'm well, the co-founder of Apnista and Blue Earth Village in Ahmed Bari. And a bit of my diving history would be that I started diving, scuba diving, uh, for 15 years ago in Honduras, Utira, Honduras. But before that, I, I liked skin diving, and I still kept the love of skin diving even while doing the, the scuba diving, training as an instructor and all of that. And taught scuba diving for a couple of years until I realized that you could train as a free diver. Like there is formal structure training for free divers. And so I started training that in 2007. And from 2007, 2008, 2009, I was moving between India and Thailand, training in Kotao and training in India and yoga and free diving in Kotao. Thailand and then came to Bali in 2010 and started teaching in Jemluk Bay. So which became Apnista, we, we got some land on the beach and started free diving school there. And so that's what we've been doing basically since. And uh, the <laughs> Blue Earth Village grew up, the, is a project that grew out of Apnista, where they, all of the main investors in Blue Earth Village, apart from our local partner who runs the restaurant, Ryan, uh, all of them, they're all free divers. And so we grew, we started with the idea of Blue Earth as a, a more expansive space to do yoga because we had a little sal on the beach, but we were sharing, we were doing the free diving training there, the cafe there and the yoga training there. So we, we need a bigger space for the, for the yoga and also we wanted more of a, more training space for the free diving school. So from that we started with building another teaching space up here with a 25 meter pool and a smaller static pool and then yoga salas and then a restaurant which which is kind of a bit of a social hub because Ahmed is was it's a great place beautiful place but it was always lacking in this kind of a so a central meeting point if you want like there's bars but they're very much for drinking like night bars there's no way in between like the restaurants and the bars so we, we started the restaurant with that idea somewhere that you could have a beer without people looking at you funny and it be kind of social or where you could come as a traveler on your own and meet other people without necessarily going to a bar and everyone's drunk you know that kind of vibe so yeah we're getting there and the project is ongoing yeah <laughs> lots of lots of doing this actually that's how we met you yeah and uh, yeah we keep on coming back <laughs> cool um a lot of the people that will be watching uh, probably are going to be just about to start diving. Can you tell a little bit more, but honestly, what was your first experience diving? Mm -hmm. uh, well, scuba diving, my first experience was, uh, skin diving was first experience in Italy as a kid. And I was scared of the dark water. And then you, as you start to snorkel and learn to dive into it, you become more relaxed with it, you know? Because yeah, but then scuba diving, I, I did my first, course in in Rotan in, in Honduras and I remember the instructor was I think very inexperienced and I remember thinking I could do this better than he is doing it <laughs> but that's it but that's not the right attitude really but yeah and I, I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it yeah yeah I found the equipment a bit alien in the beginning and so talking to a beginner diver I would say for me yeah, the, the fact that you're using equipment, I think for beginner divers, it's such an alien sensation. And you have such a sense of dependency on it. So if I, if I was talking to someone in my family, like I, I would say start with free diving. Because I don't think it's that one is better than the other necessarily. I mean, they're both, they're both very different. So they're both beautiful activities. They have very different qualities, you know. Uh, and I would say to anyone, to do both of them, but to start with the free diving, because the free diving gives you a sense of autonomy uh, in the water, so you don't have the sense of depending on the equipment, you know. And also, expect you learn more how the mind works with free diving, so you become more self-controlled in the water. You're more prone, less prone to anxiety, more able to relax, regulate your breathing, things like that. So yeah, I would definitely say for someone starting to dive, that the best way. Scuba dive is not to choose, you don't need to choose one or the other, but learning to just do a basic free diving course will give you a different sense of depth, you know, so that as you go deeper with the scuba tank, you don't feel like you're that far from the surface, 
you know, because in two or three days free diving, many people are already diving to 15, 20 meters, you know. So if you do that in a three-day scuba course afterwards, it really feels like no big deal and you don't have the same anxiety in the water. You, know, you feel very relaxed and the equipment feels like an extra, just something that you're bringing with you rather than your whole life depends on it, you know. So yeah, I, that's what I would recommend. The free diving give you confidence to start with and then you can move on to the scuba. But I'm biased, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is diving for you in the moment? At the moment? Yes. Diving for me is an elusive dream. I'm <laughs> busy working on a building site all the time. So I, uh, even though the water is just there, I do very, very little diving. Uh, very, very little free diving. Sometimes go for a snorkel. I'm not doing any free dive training. I haven't done for a long time at the moment. The, the, pro the Blue Earth project is, is taking all my time and energy, you know. And when I have time off, I, I try to escape out of Ahmed to kind of disconnect because it's hard, not, it's hard to disconnect from work here at the moment. But yeah, so, yeah, diving is an elusive dream. Something like, when we go to Rajampat, actually, is probably the last time I did any diving in a, in a time period, you know, and that was fantastic, yeah. That's a dream for us. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully next destination. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, like, you're enabling so many people to start diving here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's great, it's That's great. inspiring for sure. Sure, 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 <laughs> no, definitely. Um, all right. Can you share any story that stands out from your diving I, don't know. I remember jumping in with dolphins once and a dolphin coming hurtling, hurtling, like very clear water so you could see it from quite far away, hurtling towards me and I thought it was going to kill me and curling up in a little ball and then him spinning around and just spinning around and then we start spinning around together like that. That was beautiful. That was fun. So what's your favorite place so far and what's yeah. the difference maybe if we can share between the different ones? Yeah. So I've, I haven't dived as much, a lot of people have been diving as long as I have, I've dived in more places. But because, of, because I've been working in different places, you tend to dive a lot in a certain area. And then because you're in the dive industry, not making a huge amount of money, uh, when you are making the money, you don't have the time, so like that. But I would say Rajampat for me is, is the, I've never dived anywhere better. You know, Sipadan is fantastic as well, but Rajampat is a, is a big geographic area. And it's so amazing above the water and below the water, and you have such a variety of, of, of dive sites. You know, you've got drop-offs, you've got pinnacles, you've got mangrove swamps, you've got cha very fast channels between islands. It's, no, it's, it's pretty, it's beautiful. I, do, I don't know how long it will last, you know. They're, they're starting to really open it up, but it, it's so far it's amazing. So if you can dive it in the short term, you should go, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, for, for free. For free diving and for scuba diving, for anything, yeah, both, like definitely both. A lot of the dive sites are a lot better for up now, like yeah, definitely. Which is your favorite marine life? I don't know. I like uh, big stuff is always beautiful, you know. Like when you can get close to big stuff, there's an awe. I've never seen a full whale, whale shark, like manta rays. Uh, yeah, the grace of a manta ray is pretty special, you know, and big sharks. Yeah, so no, I don't have one in particular, to be honest. It's, it's uh, to be honest, it's more the moment. So you can see a, an incredible creature in the water, but you don't have this, because you're either in a group or, you know, it depends the moment. Yeah, one of the most memorable interactions I had was scuba diving, actually, strangely enough, with a manta. But it was just because it was just me and one diver, and we were out in the middle of nowhere, and he came and went, over our heads and just circled us and, and it was about seven meters wide. It was huge. It had Kobe underneath it that were a meter and a half long. You know, so it was it was really special. And because it was so unexpected. It was so it wasn't somewhere you would normally see them, you know. So yeah, it depends. Give any piece of advice to everybody who is planning their first day. Okay, so I would say come to Ahmed, <laughs> book ahead and come <laughs> and uh, do a free diving course and then to leave yourself five or six days to train free diving and then leave yourself five or six days to train scuba and then leave yourself a week or ten days to go and visit other parts of Indonesia. So I would say like a three week to four week holiday and spend maybe a week to ten days training in Ahmed 
and then going to Rajampat or Komodo, places like that, or if closer to Nusa Penida is amazing. So the reason, yeah, I would say start with the free diving because the, the way we, we are teaching free diving here uh, in Atmista, in Ahmed, is uh, we're teaching using techniques from yoga and meditation. And it's the idea that every person can, can learn to free dive. And it's basically understanding the way the brain works and the way the, the way the body and the brain works and how the breath is wired into the nervous system. The way we are teaching free diving in Apnista is we're using a, a kind of a mind-body approach, a holistic approach to free diving. So instead of focusing on target depths or minimum requirements as you would do on certification focus courses, uh, there's a natural tendency to do that. Um, if you know you have to certify to level one or level two and have to do a minimum, minimum depth, it's normal that even though the instructor might not want you to, you end up focusing on that. So we're coming from the point of view that that's, that's actually, that works against you as a, as a student to focus on target depths. What you'll do is focus on the connection between the mind and the body, moment to moment. And so trying to find flow in the moment as you learn the process. So you'll learn in the classroom, you use oximeters and you'll practice different breath holes. You'll understand the science of what you're doing first and then you'll, you'll explore that in the water with an instructor beside you. Okay, so basically what that means is we take the science of the mind and body and apply it to free diving. So if you understand how neuroplasticity works and using techniques from yoga and meditation so that you're not saying, you're not trying to go in the water and, and be a superhero. You, it, it's a natural response to have some anxiety when you dive, you know. So it's understanding your, your response, your emotional response to that and working slowly through it, you know, so that you're, you're diving. A natural response if you're holding your breath and moving away from the surface is to have some kind of mental alarm bells going on. And they can be kind of like background noise or they can be that you're, 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 you're fully anxious and it's full level of conscious anxiety. Okay, but for most people there's some alarm bells in the beginning. Not, that's a normal response because you're holding your breath and moving away from the air source. And so what we do is understand how that can affect the muscular tone of the body, your posture, every, your, your position of the facial expression, all of that, and work with understanding that and then flipping it so that learning to make the body relax, learning to work with facial expression, learning to mental conditioning as you're before the dive and during the dive. And rather, and rather than focus on getting to the end of the line, you focus on what's happening moment to moment. So there's a strong element of mindfulness in it. And so basically this is not like uh, voodoo stuff, it's science-based uh, mindfulness practices and yeah, self-conditioning. So basically you're the, the instructor dives with you every dive, you go down, and when you feel like turning around, you turn around. But what we ask you to do is be aware of what's happening moment to moment. And that will start to change the mental reaction to what's happening. So the first big change is you understand the science of what's going on, you realize, oh, there's a lot more oxygen in the body than I think I have. That's the first thing. And then the mental conditioning is that, oh, actually, I'm okay with this. There's nothing to be afraid of. And then physical technique, motor skill training, so that you use less oxygen when you're in the water. So learning to, to move with the minimum of, of movement, if the minimum of tension. So the muscles that work are working and the muscles that don't need to work are nice and soft. You know, so drawing attention to all of these small little things and you bring them together and you can see quite a, uh, uh, yeah, quite a big jump in the beginning. So, and so it's very rewarding for instructors to teach. So like if you're teaching free diving well, it should be a very rewarding experience for the instructor as well because you're giving people tools that they can use in their daily living because you're dealing with the, the, the primal responses of the body in free diving. You're, you're overriding the breathing response and you're taking tools that work on the mind-body connection and applying it to this situation. But you could apply those tools to any situation. And we hope that the student, that's what we're trying to give the students, that they leave thinking that, okay, I've learned this new skill, new skill, free diving. But all of the, the stuff that I've used to, and applied it to this, to apnea, I can use in my daily living and it can help me be happier, more productive, less, less anxious life. You know? <laughs> yeah. well, do we need any like prerequisites in order to start such a Yeah, you, I mean, you need to be in a standard level of health. 
Like, uh, the main issues would be all the same issues you would have for scuba diving. They would all be related to lung function, uh, like punctured lungs and things like that, dramatic things like that would be a no-go. But the main, the main issues for people with uh, problems with their ears, like that would be, if you don't have problems with your ears, anyone can free dive, you know. The other ones would be high blood pressure, low blood pressure, you have to be, have, take more care. But we have, we have free divers, we have guys, we have one guy with us who's in his 70s. You know, so yeah, he's he and he only got into free diving in his seventies. So yeah, we've got everything. We've had everything from very young to much older. The main thing is the main the main risk on the higher end is that your blood would be for things like your the your heart condition and and blood pressure and things like that. You know, that would be what you want to be careful with. Good. What about yoga? What's the role of yoga actually for experience? Okay, so. If we understand yoga to be the, not just the physical postures that you normally do in a classroom situation in the West, yoga is a vast toolbox. It's, it's got emotional conditioning practices, it's got breath work, training, training the breath, it's got physical posture work obviously, and it's got meditation, training, training concentration. So it's only a two-day course, so we can't, you can't become a yoga master in two days. What we are doing is taking the insights of yoga, so that would be non-goal focused, so you know, the, the mindfulness of yoga, and then various techniques as well. So, for example, Uriana Banda is a stretch for the diaphragm, that'd be one thing we would teach. We use some breathing practices that are based on yoga, Brahmari breathing, and things that help up open up the sinuses. Other practices are helping up open up the lungs, so give you more lung volume. But the main way I would say yoga is, is working in the course is understanding how we learn new things, you know, and learning how to do with the minimum of doing. So good, uh, good technique in yoga is good technique in freediving. You can't do anything in the body without affecting other places in the body and also the mind and also the emotions. And this might sound like a kind of hippie kind of thing to say, like the mind, body and emotions are all connected. But from a, neuro, from a neuroscientific point of view, that's, that's true. That's correct. And so that would be one, that would be, that's, that's the basis of yoga. You know, that understanding of the connection between everything. So we would apply that in the freediving situation. Whereas on the basic level, learning to move, use the muscles that you need to use and don't use the ones you don't need to use. You know, that would be another thing. Another thing would be understanding the interplay between, say, facial expression and your emotions. And then ideas and words, how you can use certain words to talk to yourself to foster different attitudes. So it's basically a, yeah, a neuroplastic uh, approach to freediving. So, and that's yoga based. All of that is the, the broad school of yoga, understanding the, the, the way the mind and body connect and the nervous system and the breath. You know. How do you see diving world evolving in the future? Uh, I don't actually know. That's it. That's I don't want to be pessimistic because uh, hopefully people like the founder of Microsoft, one of the not Bill Gates, the other guy, he's a scuba diver. Hopefully people like that with the the money and the power can do something to start protecting the oceans. But yeah, I mean at the moment the. Uh, yeah, it's quite scary what's happening worldwide with the oceans. But yeah, I would, I would like to see, speaking from the freediving point of view, it's, it's exploding, you know. And so you don't need, you don't need a rich ocean to freedive, but it's a much sadder place if there's not the type of biodiversity we have now. It's quite frightening, the statistics that are coming out now, what the scientists are telling us is quite scary. So, yeah, I mean, on that level, on the natural side, yeah, I think everyone knows, all divers know that uh, dive it while you can, because it might not be there in 10, 15 years. It certainly is not going to get better. That's what it looks like at the moment, you know. But you never know. The, the planet Earth is incredibly adaptive, so we might not have any coral reefs left in the tropics, but you might have them in Norway, so who knows. But from, from the freediving side of things, uh, the way we are teaching freediving is we're using it as a gateway into yoga and meditation. And so for us, it's, it's a nice feeling that you think, okay, I'm not just teaching tourists to, to swim down a line to 10 or 20 meters. 
these they're, they're people that are going back into their lives and hopefully they're taking these tools and using them in their daily lives you know and that would be our hope that we're able to use free diving as a vehicle for kind of a more conscious life more autonomous human beings you know? and that, in that sense it's good because free diving is exploding as a, as a sport you know but you, like anything you can have you can go different directions it, it can be quite a narcissistic practice because it's very focused internally you know but that that focus internally eventually gives you self-awareness so maybe in the beginning it's all about you 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 how deep you can go and you know and you think everyone wants to hear about your diet and things like that or you know or your equalization issues or whatever but then I, I, over time it becomes less important that aspect becomes less important you know some of the top free divers are the ones who take it least least seriously you know that like you know yeah a lot of them. They're the ones that take it least seriously at all. They're not. They will not sit and chat to you about their equalization issues for two hours. You know. You know. So and they're the ones who are also starting to see the other side of it. You get less focused on technique, and it becomes more of a kind of unification practice or a med meditation practice like that. So yeah, for for free diving, it's exploding, and hopefully that feeds into creating more of a yeah, more of a holistic approach as well, and that helps society in some way you know that's the that's the that's the way you'd like to see it anyway cool. any message you want to leave to the audience um yeah uh yeah it go diving scuba diving while it lasts you don't want to waste any time some of the most beautiful places in the world underwater are underwater i should say first is some of the most beautiful places on planet earth are underwater and they are disappearing are losing their richness, their wealth. And then learn to free dive because you can learn techniques that you can use in your daily living. It can give you, uh, yeah, a different approach to life. And both of those things, free diving and scuba, are fantastic practice. Like, then it's not one better than the other. You know, I still would enjoy a scuba dive sometimes. And free diving, yeah, is fantastic also because your interaction with the life underwater is more intimate. You know, so, you don't have these bubbles blowing. You don't have the sound of the bubbles in your ear, and also you don't have the bubbles scaring fish away. You know, so they're, they're both, you can obviously you can go much longer in a scuba tank, so there's places you can explore in a scuba tank with very strong currents like sea mounts or wrecks that have got very strong currents, things like that. Free diving is not optimal for that. It's not the best thing. And so scuba is fantastic for all that kind of thing, you know, really deep, uh, like deeper, um, penetrations, things like that, and free diving is much better for, yeah, interactions with big life, and and just the feeling of freedom, the the lightness you have in the water, you know. So yeah, dive, scuba dive, see the things before they go, and learn to free dive. That'd be my kind of final message. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.